All right, today we're looking at how to make your drums louder, punchier, and overall sound better really quickly in Ableton. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your drum loop set. I have this beat here. We'll take a listen to it dry. Cool. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a little shimmer to these drums. And so to do that, I'm going to be creating a reverb send. I'm not going to be using our returns and sends down here. I'm going to do this all within uh, our chain here. So let's start by creating a reverb. And I'll just use the stock Ableton reverb uh, for now. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding reverb up to the high. And instead of using this input processing EQ, I'm just going to put an EQ ahead of this reverb so that I can cut out all of the frequencies I'm looking for. So throw on an EQ8 before this reverb and let's just put on a low cut and go up to about 1K because I want to move in here. We might dial into these frequencies a little bit later. Now let's take a listen. Let's bring the wetness all the way up. I'm going to get rid of this high cut here. Nice. Great, let's bring the decay time down a little bit. Let's play with this reflect, bring it down a little bit. Nice, so this is a great starting point. Once you get something sounding similar to this, go ahead and select both of these devices and hit Command G to group them, which will make this an audio effect. And if you hit the second button here, you're gonna see this chain, and this is gonna be our reverb chain. And right below it, I'm just gonna right click and do create chain, and this will be our dry chain. And this is gonna be how we're, the, we're gonna be able to level our reverb. The dry chain is gonna be 100% volume if it's set at the 0.0, .0 dB. And we can use this reverb slider of these dBs to control how loud we want our reverb. So we're gonna start up at zero, and what I like to do is I like to close my eyes and I drag down till it sounds right, because sometimes the numbers throw me off if I'm looking directly at them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click play, and then I'm gonna start dragging down until I find a spot that I think sounds good. Nice, that sounds pretty good. It landed at about 11.5 dB. So let's turn that off and back on. Now I think this reverb still sounds a little too long, so I might work with this decay time, the reflect and the diffuse knob to find the pocket in there. Again, let's turn it off. Nice, I think that sounds great. So the next step, now that we have this, and we can just call this group reverb, and let's go ahead and close that for now. And next, I wanna add some saturation. So I'm gonna add the uh, saturator device right here. And let's just hear what it sounds like with the saturator on. Turn it off. Sounds pretty much the same. Let's move this to medium curve. And bring down the bass just a little bit. I'm gonna bring, so now I'm gonna bring down the output so that the output kind of matches uh, where we were at before. Nice. 
Now, as you can see, I was clipping with this saturator on. One way that we could have uh, gone around that would have been to hit this soft clip button. What that's going to do is it's going to uh, take any transient that's clipping and round it out so that it doesn't clip so hard. It's not going to square it off. It's going to round it off more like a circle, which is going to sound really nice, smooth, and warm. So now that we have this, knowing that minus 4.57 sounds good, let me bring this back up to zero and let's try turning on and off the soft clip and see how that sounds. I actually prefer it with, with the soft clip on. It's uh, And we're going to actually be doing this again in our next step of the processing. But let's leave that soft clip on, and I'm just going to use this dry wet knob again with my eyes closed to find a place that sounds good in the mix. Nice. I think that sounds great. All right. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and make, I guess I can't make that device any smaller, but we'll just move on to our final part of our processing, which is going to be a glue compressor. So what I'm going to be looking at here is I'm going to be looking at the attack release and the ratio, the threshold, the makeup, and the soft clip. So first things first, let's start with the threshold. And what that's doing is it's letting able to know, hey, if there's a noise coming through here that's over a certain dB, I want you to bring that down. But everything else that's already below that number that I set on this threshold is going to stay at the same level. So maybe that snare is at 9 dB, but the hi-hats are at 12 dB. So if I go minus 10 dB on the threshold, that snare is going to go down a dB, but the hi-hats should stay the same. So let's go ahead and play with this threshold knob. That sounds awesome right there, right around 10 and a half dB. Now, as you can hear, it's a lot quieter now. It's got a smoother bounce to it, but it's much quieter. So we're gonna be using the makeup gain knob and also using soft clip again to let those uh, edges of any clipping transient smooth out. So. I said I was going to take a look at the attack and release. I'm actually really liking how this sounds, but if you want to get a quicker uh, sounding of like the transients getting brought down or up from, uh, from this compression, you're going to want to use the attack knob to make it quicker, release knob to make it longer till it comes back in. So I'm going to work with these till I find the pocket again. All right, I like this point three. Let's work on the release. I'm gonna stay here at point two. That sounds really nice. And the ratio, I'm gonna leave at four. You can go ahead and move those around and see if there's something you like better, but I like how that's sounding there. Now let's try and use this makeup gain knob to find a level that sounds similar to uh, what this compress what this drum sounded like before we started processing the compression. So I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it back on and use this makeup gain knob to find that. Nice, that sounds good, but as you can see, we're clipping now. So let's go ahead and hit that soft clip button again and take a listen. Off and on. All right, the last step, this is sounding really good. It's a little too loud still. So instead of just turning down that makeup gain because I'm really liking how this compression sounds, is I'm gonna use this dry wet knob to now make this parallel compression. Because what it's gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding in as much wetness of this compression, but I'm gonna have the dry signal still in there so that we're gonna get both of those, which means two parallel compression. So let's go ahead and just close our eyes again. And I'm gonna move this down until I find the sweet spot.
That sounds awesome right around there. So last step, I'm just going to group all of these together and I'm going to call this drum bus. And if you go ahead and open up this uh, little on looking symbol, which is gonna bring up all these knobs, you could make a really easy way to have your own little preset drum processor. So let's create three macros by renaming these first three knobs. We're gonna do reverb, saturation, and compression. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna open up this reverb again, and I'm going to map by right-clicking on the DB of the reverb to macro one. And then I'm gonna map again <laughs> this chain volume to reverb. And I had to do that twice because this reverb was already within its own group. If it wasn't in the group, if, if, it, if it was just a in this gr group on its own, I wouldn't have to do that. But because I grouped the reverb, I had to do that twice. So now I can control my reverb there. So let's go ahead, close that up. Let's look at the saturator here. And maybe I have a bunch of options I, I could do for this saturator. I could put the drive to this knob. I could put the bass, the dry wet, or uh, any of these really. So maybe I'll put the drive. So let's set this to saturator. So if I go down, I'm going to get less drive. You can see this moving with it. And if I go up, I'll get more drive. All right. And lastly, let's do the makeup gain to the compression knob. Okay, great. So now if I close everything here, I have these three knobs. Maybe we want to turn down the reverb. Turn down the drive or up the drive. And let's turn up that glue compressor. Or down. Let's turn off our drum bus. Here. And on. Off and on. Now, don't forget to save this if you created the device. That way, you can go ahead and throw this drum bus on all of your drums as a good starting point, and don't be afraid to add more effects and add more macros and create your own presets. Hope you guys really enjoyed this. Come back for more tutorials or visit my website, mrmango.com. Hope to see you guys soon.